Hello, my name is Dr Hilary Marlowe and I'm a Director of Studies at one of the Cambridge Colleges, Girton College. I also teach in the Faculty of Divinity. My aim in the next few minutes is to unpack the question, what on earth is theology, religion and philosophy of religion, which is the title of the degree course here in the Faculty of Divinity at Cambridge. Just so you know that I'm not a robot, I've uploaded a photograph of myself that I took this afternoon. And in the rest of this session, I want to address just a few questions that you might find interesting. The first is to think about studying religion and how and why different religion, religious traditions develop. The next is to ask the question, well, what exactly, what on earth do we mean by theology and how does that differ from philosophy of religion? But before we go any further, I've got a question for you. How many world religions can you name? Think about that now. Can you get to five just very quickly off the top of your head? Maybe you'll find the symbols on this picture helpful to prompt you. Maybe you'll think that, as I do, that a lot of them are rather obscure. This word cloud gives just a, f a few of the many, many different religious groups that are out there. Some of them will be well known to you, Christianity, Buz Buddhism, Islam, others you've probably never heard of and may never come across. It highlights the fact that even within some of the mainstream religious groups, there are subgroups and subsections, denominations and different ways of doing that particular religious tradition. So just to say, talk about Buddhism, for example, is not to talk about something that's necessarily the same all across the world. What percentage of the world's population do you think would say that they were religious or belonged to a religious tradition? The answer might surprise you on the next slide. 84% of people in 2005 said that they belonged to a religious group of some kind. That leaves 16% who said they were non-religious, but of those, half said that they actually believed in a god or gods of some kind. We've already looked at this world cloud, but let's just... So then the next question is, well, if they are different and the differences matter, what makes them different from one another? And how can we best understand those differences? Here are some suggestions of ways we could explore the differences. We, we might want to look at the founders of each religion and what mattered to them, how the religion came into being. We'll want to explore the core beliefs that form the foundation of the particular tradition and look probably for many religions at the scriptures, that the sacred books that they hold dear and that help to underpin what they believe. But also we want to look at things like practices, religious practices and rituals and why they matter and the religious calendar, why at different times of the year different religions have particular festivals. We'll want to look at symbols and gestures and the importance of rituals and recitation. We might also want to look at places of worship and holy places, why they're holy, why people go there, when they go there, and explore what the significance is of those particular locations in a particular religious tradition. These are just a few of many, many ways we could look at the differences. But despite all these differences, we still might want to ask, what do all these religions have in common? Is there any shared ground? And probably the most obvious is to say that most religions seem to have an understanding of an ethic or a duty towards other people, or perhaps to also towards animals, towards the natural world that comes out of their tradition and their belief in, in God or gods. 
the idea that there is a golden rule that we should treat others as we would like them to treat us or as the Judeo-Christian tradition puts it, to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. So that might be something that is shared amongst many of them. It's some, certainly something we could discuss. When you study different religions, you're trying to understand how and why those religious groups have developed, what has influenced them, what they believe, where they've come from. And there are all kinds of different subject areas that you might use to help you understand that. You might think politically about the political landscape. You might want to consider historical factors, look back into the past and see how that has influenced what has come to be in the present. Literature plays an important part, both the scriptures, we've already talked about that, but also looking at what different writers within those traditions have written about their own understanding of the religion, the way it developed and what it means for them, what they believe about it. Study of cultures and religion within culture, within societies, within families is really important. And that's where social anthropology comes in, exploring different expressions of faith within different cultural contexts and the relationship between religion and culture, which is very, very strong in many parts of the world. And we might also want to think about the psychology of religion, why people believe what they believe and why they practice like they practice. Lots of different avenues of thought and understanding and subject areas to study. And there are many more that I could go into, but I'm going to move on now. OK, another question. What is theology and how does it differ from religion or religious studies? Well, first of all, we need to understand the word. The word theology comes from two Greek words, uh, theos, which is the Greek word for God, and logos, which is the Greek word for words or understanding or study. So theology literally means understanding about God or study of God. And it's similar in form to words that we're much more familiar with, like biology, which comes from the Greek word bios, which means life, and logos, understanding, understanding about life or geology, Greek word geo, earth, and logos, understanding, understanding about the earth. So theology isn't in itself, as a word, very complicated, but it asks some quite complicated and interesting questions on the next slide. Questions such as, what is God like? How do we explain God or God's how do gods relate to the world and to human beings? Can religious belief fix the mess that the world is in? And if so, how? What happens when people pray? Does it make any difference? How does God or the gods want people to behave? What's the way to a happy life? These are all really important big questions that theology asks and that those who are studying theology seek to find out. So if you are studying theology, it will include a number of things. Carefully reading religious scriptures to understand what the authors meant and what their understanding of the world is. Looking at some of the great theologians of the past and of the present to understand their thinking and how they developed it looking at back into history, the historical developments that have shaped how a religious tradition and its theological thinking has evolved and emerged and how it's responded to crises and moments of trouble and stress in history and discussing some of these key theological ideas about God, human nature, suffering, redemption, hope, all kinds of important ideas. We're going to move on now to think about philosophy of religion and on the next slide. So we thought a little bit about religious studies, studying religion and theology. Now it's time to ask about philosophy of religion and how it differs from theology and religious studies. First of all, let's understand what the word philosophy means. 
Like theology, it comes from two Greek words, philo, meaning love, and sophia, meaning wisdom. So philosophy is literally the love of wisdom. And it's been the place where people explore big questions about what it is to be wise, how to become wise about the world and about oneself. Big questions such as, does God exist? Do I exist? Do we have free will? Is faith rational? What is truth? Where does morality come from? Studying philosophy and ethics includes a number of different tasks. Reading the works of core philo philosophers, both ancient ones, Aristotle, Plato, and modern ones. It involves evaluating and understanding central philosophical concepts, central understanding about the world that we live in. It involves looking at the different traditions in philosophy and ethics that have grown up over the centuries, how they've come to be and what their relevance is today. And it involves debating issues in contemporary ethics. There are lots of issues that are really relevant in today's society and having the tools to think through them from a philosophical point of view, an ethical point of view, is really important to informing wise choices. So why might you want to study theology, religion and philosophy of religion here in Cambridge? Well, first, it will help you to understand the modern world and global challenges. It seems that hardly a week goes by when there isn't something about religion in the news. And quite often it can be something rather disturbing, conflict, violence, upset. In order to understand the way the world is and why conflicts happen, it's really important to understand the background in religious belief and traditions. Also, studying theology, religion and philosophy of religion will widen your own horizons. It'll expose you to lots of different ideas and understanding about the world and the way the world works and the way different people in different parts of the world conduct their daily lives. That'll be really useful if you travel, but also it could equally be useful for helping to understand your neighbour uh, or your flatmate who may be of a from a different part of the world and a different religious culture than your own. Finally, studying theology, religion and philosophy of religion will enable you to develop a huge number of transferable skills. You'll need to use critical reasoning to understand texts. You'll be evaluating historical sources. You'll be conducting analysis of texts and synthesis of ideas. You'll be learning excellent communication skills, both oral and written. You'll be exploring the methods that you can use for historical inquiry. You'll be learning how to use case studies and many, many more skills that employers will really value in the years to come. So, why not come and study at Cambridge? It's a great place to be. And here are just some of the courses, the modules that you can take in an undergraduate degree in theology, religion and philosophy of religion. There's a vast choice out there and so many interesting avenues to pursue. Finally, keep in touch with us talk to those who are already studying here or have been here and we'd love to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks for listening.